Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his teardown lab. If you noticed one of my earlier videos, I actually spoke about uh, decentifying, destinkifying trainers, and the uh, ultimate solution for that was using ozone. It was using a small, tiny little ozone generator that you get for the inside of personal saunas or wardrobes, and I wanted to show you this. That's right, this is an ozone generator that's supposed to be capable of generating about seven grams an hour, which sounds like quite a lot when you consider it's just a gas. So it's composed of several parts. In fact, it's only really a couple, but we'll probably have to add to these parts to make it something usable. Let me just unwrap the parts here. So the top part there is basically it looks like a PCB. It's got this kind of window on it, which you can just about see in the light. And then on the other side, another window. Okay, so that's the first bit. It's kind of a ceramic-y, glassy type thing going on there. It sort of goes invisible in the light. It's very shiny, it's a silvery finish. And then here you've you've actually got a power supply and it's some sort of inverter thing and here you go see it says AC 220 volts 10 grams C whatever the C means but I think this was the 7 to 10 grams per hour unit big heat sink on the bottom let's have a look I cannot resist seeing if we can just get into this by undoing this heat sinky thing because they're the oh in fact I can see you see there this white that's potting so there's no way. We're going to loosen this and I don't think we're going to get very far. Oh, tell a lie. You can see something. Let's play along at home, kids. So let's see what we can see. Almost mystery chips, but you can just about read them. It's an E13005-2. So there's two of those bonded to this heatsink. And then inside you've got a couple of caps here, a nice choke. There's a rectifier here. I think that's a rectifier. Can't count the legs. Looks like one. A few electrolytics and a few bits and bobs. And then under this potting, it looks like the outline edges of, of a coil. You know, there's something going on there and there's some gubbins. Now, what this is, is a high tension generator. Now, I don't think they call it a neon sign um, power supply. It's something else. Um, and what its purpose is, is to actually generate thousands of volts. So it might be generating, I don't know, 20,000 volts, let's say for argument's sake. And then what they'll do is somehow jump through the dielectric here and it should glow purple with ozone gas generation power. So let's figure out how we actually hook this up. And what I suspect we do is we just solder these two onto the power supply here. And these two plug into your mains. What I'll do is hook this up with a plug and we'll see if it's absolutely as terrifying as I imagine it could be. Okay, I've got Mr. Gassy, Mr. Soldery and Mr. Grippy Arm thing. Let's fire this up.
gorgeous. I'll tell you what, this thing is absolutely sucking out the heat. And uh, these gas soldering irons really put out quite a lot. So if you've got your weedy little electric, um, regular electric soldering iron, like a 15 watt or something like that, you're going to have a lot of trouble with this. While I'm at it, I'm just going to tin the mains wires. A bit on the short side. Shouldn't be a problem, really. Just tin the tips. on that one. Ow! Clean that off. Okay. Now time to find a mains plug. It's so rare that you have to find these things, right? When was the last time you used something with a separate mains plug? Okay guys, this is the moment of truth. I've actually got the mains connected now to the unit and I've got the panel sitting on top of a CD case because frankly I can't think of anything I've got lying around to insulate this thing. And also I've got no idea how big uh, an air jump, uh, an air gap that the spark can jump. So <laughs> theoretically this could jump out and zap me. Um, I've got the power leads as you can see, the actual HT leads hooked up like this and you can see the metal clamp is about two inches away from the end so that's way far enough this thing is actually at an angle you can see it's sort of sloping down like a slide here and i'm just gonna turn it on there's nothing more i can actually do other than turn it on and uh maybe get a little bit back cover my face let's see what happens scary nothing i'm scared now Oh, I tell you what, <laughs> let me have a fiddle with all of this and try again. I, I can't take this. My, my heart's freaking out. Give me a moment. You know what they say, third time is a charm. It's all hooked up now. I've got it sat here. Again, quite scared. Ooh, I don't know what to expect. I'm going to stand, you know, sit kind of back, fairly far back and uh, let's switch it on. Three, two, one. Wow. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of purple, a purple light here. Um, I'm going to try to adjust the camera to show you this. Whoa! Whew. I'm, I can smell some serious amounts of ozone here. I mean, the camera really isn't doing it justice. I'm going to have to uh, try to switch into all these manual focusing modes just to give you the opportunity to even grasp how intense this is. Let me try turning all the lights off here. Mm, no, it's just not being picked up, but yeah, just to describe this, it's, it's very much a very purple light and it's, I can smell the ozone. Clearly, I mean, if I had a fan, I think if I mount this all in a box and everything, I'm going to put a fan in it to sort of blow um, air through, so it's blowing out the ozone through one end. And I suspect I'll mount it in a plastic project box because I'm not sure what will happen if that touches anything. It looks like it could set things on fire though, so maybe a metal box might be better. Maybe if it's in a metal box but suspended with a suitable air gap, at least I can earth the metal box. Um, being again very cautious because I don't want to touch too many things. I've got a project box like this so I think if I cut uh, a hole in the back and a hole in the front and have forced air blowing through it I can probably mount everything in there with a switch and it'll be my ozone firing box. 
but I need to have a route around first, see what sort of fans I can get, because if I use normal 12 volt fan units, then that's gonna be a whole pain in the butt because then you need an AC adapter. Um, if I can find some mains fans, then that's gonna be far better. So that's as far as I've got today. Um, the ozone is, is it's really weird. It's like I can feel a breeze. Does the generation of ozone just, you know, is it firing out some sort of electric waves? Um, if you know at home, please leave comments down below and let me know. I, um, I can smell it. It's really stinking out the place. In fact, I'm gonna turn that off. So you can see it's gone off instantly. On, off, on, off. I'm almost scared to touch the plate, actually. Um, I suspect it, it, you know, whatever it is, it should be discharged, but you know, I just don't know. Frankly, I'm not gonna mess with it. Um, please feel free to leave comments down below. I would love for you to uh, let me know any insight you've got on this. I, you know, I'm just gonna put it all together in a box and forget about it. But if you know anything about how it works and what it's actually doing, please feel free to let me know. Um, click subscribe if you wanna be updated of all my videos. And as ever, thanks for watching.